Welcome to The Compass, a show where we discuss today's world from a Christian perspective. I'm Carolyn Justice. And I'm Zach Turner. Today we will cover the recent SAG after strikes, streaming services, and the business of movies. Let's get started. Although both of these strikes have now ended, SAG-AFTRA, also known as Screen Actors Guild, and the WGA, or the Writers Guild of America, were recently on strike against the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, or the AMPTP. The main issues that SAG-AFTRA and WGA went on strike for was to ask for increased minimum pay rates, increased streaming residuals, improved working conditions, and guarantees about how artificial intelligence will be used to protect their likenesses and make sure they are compensated when their work is used to train AI. Needless to say, these strikes have heavily impacted the media world with severe delays and disruptions. Some of your favorite shows and movies might be pushed back months or even years. Besides the delays we are seeing in entertainment, there are more serious economic consequences. At the 100-day mark of the strikes, there was an estimated $3 billion hit to the California economy. The Milken Institute estimated a $6 billion national loss. Lots of strikers have been forced to pull money from their retirement funds to survive the holdout. Recently, both the WGA and SAG-AFTRA came to terms with the AMPTP, signing a contract that largely favors the writers and actors unions. In these agreements, the unions were granted success-based residuals from streaming, substantial AI limitations, minimum writer's room staffing, revised requirements for virtual audi auditions, and general wage increases. Unfortunately, both contracts will be reevaluated as soon as 2026, possibly rendering their efforts in vain. With more on this topic, we have Addie Seat discussing the Writers Guild and SAG after strikes. Later on, we have Zachary Wheeler with more on the subject. On May 2, 2023, the Writers Guild of America went on strike. Just a couple of months later, on July 14th, the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio, followed them. Many are aware of these strikes, but they are fairly uninformed about the reasons behind them. Honestly, I just don't think they care. I think it didn't make big news because it's not as universal for everyone. I, I only know about it because I'm interested in media communications and I had seen it on the news, all the pop culture stuff. Discontent over artificial intelligence, royalties, and streaming services are what pushed these writers and actors to go on strike. While this strike has many implications for those who work in television and film, it also has implications for those who consume this media as well. Many television shows and movies have been put on hold for the past couple of months due to these strikes. I know that it, um, there's been a lot of issues with, with AI and stuff, and it's been a struggle for them, but it's also been really annoying me selfishly because there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to come out a lot sooner than but it's been delayed and pushed back. After many months of picketing, the Writers Guild strike ended on September 27, 2023. The actor strike came to a tentative end on November 9, 2023. The agreement that was made consisted of pay raises and regulations and increased residuals from streaming services. So it's interesting right now if they can prove that you've submitted something to a studio production that is chat GPT or AI of some kind, they can reject it. Will these agreements hold or will other strikes continue to affect Hollywood in the future? Only time will tell. This has been Addie Seat reporting for MC SWU. Thanks, Addie, for a closer look into the strikes. After the break, we have Zachary Wheeler talking about the Writers Guild and SAG after strikes and how they are impacting both society and entertainment. Later, we will go to the street to see what students say about streaming platforms, movie theater attendance, and the writer and actor strikes. What if there's a place for you where your dreams and future collide with God's vision and direction, where thinking and doing go hand in hand with innovation, where servant leaders of the next generation are grown, and where your story can be written and change the course of history, where generosity is contagious, and if you catch it, you just might change the world. This is it. Step into community, step into faith, step into life. Step into Southern Wesleyan University. How am I supposed to move on? He was, he was my fiance. I lost him all in one night because of a stupid choice. I could have done something. What do you mean I could have done something? What was I supposed to do? I don't want to hear it anymore. Bye.
back to The Compass. I am here with Zachary Wheeler, a fellow actor and music extraordinaire, to learn more about the SAG after strikes and where he stands on the issues. How are you today, Zach? I'm so good, Carolyn. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah. What are your general thoughts on the SAG after strike? Oh man, I think the SAG after strike is a beautiful way for actors to stand together. Um, along with the WAG, the writers, uh, and just kind of tell Hollywood how we want our art to be appreciated and how we want to be respected for what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. As an actor yourself, what impacts have you noticed on local and high profile actors and writers? I've noticed a lot of impact. I think, um, you know, due to inflation across the U.S. and across the world, um, actors are wanting to own what they do uh, and wanting to be compensated for what they do at a higher level. Um, and so I think it really is time that Hollywood kind of take a note and sit back and really start respecting what actors do because we truly, uh, whether locally or on screen in Hollywood, we bring their art to life. And so I think we need to be compensated for that. You make such great points. Productions can imitate the likeness of both extras and stars with AI to cut costs. How do you think the contract expiration will affect future negotiations between the Writers Guild and studios? Sure, so I think it's a really heavy topic. I think that AI is uh, a really incredible thing, a uh, really incredible technology that we now have um, that wasn't um, achievable at the time that SAG-AFTRA was started uh, or even at the merge. And so I think the expiration of the contract is in line with the other expirations. The contracts are supposed to be renegotiated every three years. So I do think um, that that follows along with what we've seen in history. However, I do wish that there was more protection for the actors from AI. I do agree um, that I think sag after got a long way, and that's what you do with negotiations. You can't just go in there and just hope that you get everything checked off your list. But I do hope that Hollywood really starts to pay attention to what sag after is asking for, because I don't think it's anything extraordinary. Um, we just want basic, basic protections against AI because um, Hollywood and producers and studios are able to physically recreate us and even um, our voices into things that they didn't pay us for performing. So I think that this contract comes a long way with basic provisions, but I think that we've still got a long way to go. I'm right there with you. The Writers Guild agreement with major production companies expires in 2026. How do you think this will influence actors and writers in the future? Sure, so like I said before, SAG-AFTRA stands super strongly in line with WGA. Mm -hmm. And so I fully believe that as we continue, um, even when WGA reached their, um, or WAG, I'm sorry, when they reached their agreement in September, SAG-AFTRA was uh, right there backing them, saying that they were gonna read through the agreement, help them with anything they needed, even though their strike hadn't ended. So I think it's a beautiful thing that we as actors and writers get to band together against the tyrannical nature of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of that commitment. Do you know of any delays on movies or TV shows that you were looking forward to? Will your support of the strikes affect your support of these movies or TV shows? Absolutely, I knew of several. Um, I even knew that during the Oppenheimer premiere, um, Emily Blunt and Florence Pugh walked off the red carpet because the strike was initiated while they were on the red carpet. Um, I also know that Wicked halted production and they were literally six days away from finishing. So I do think that uh, as an actor, I have to be really thoughtful about what I spend my time viewing, um, even in the ways that streaming services are also now included in this contract. So yeah, it definitely affects how I view things from now on. Thank you so much, Zach, for joining us on The Compass. After the break, we will share our personal thoughts on the writers and actors' strikes. Then, Andrew Baxley will go to the streets to gather opinions on streaming, movie theater attendance, and the strikes. This is what winners are made of. This is what leaders are made of. This is what scholars are made of. This is what believers are made of. This is what warriors are made of. The Media Communications Program at Southern Western University originally started with only eight students, but now has risen up to 45 majors, and it was ranked number six in the state as of 2020. 
here at SWU, I feel like I've been able to build a portfolio. Like we're actually doing hands-on work and that's what I appreciate the most. I want to know how to do what I'll be doing in my career. So you're working on stuff that you really care about. That passion for something will drive you. Connect with your peers, engage in meaningful conversations, and embrace the power of diverse ideas. It's been uh, good to you know see how to uh, work hands-on with the professor as well as with other students teaching. Uh, it's, it's been good to teach what I've been taught so that I can better learn. Uh, I see a lot of potential in this program. I think that we just need to keep buying in to each other. Together, we can shape a college environment where media communication thrives responsibly. We're back with more from the Compass. With all of this information regarding the strikes, it has me wondering, Zach, what are your thoughts on the strikes? Well, Carolyn, first and foremost, I'm thankful that the strike is over for all of the actors and writers that had to go through this whole ordeal. That must have been really tough uh, financially, and, but they held out together, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, selfishly, <laughs> I'm definitely ready to get back to the shows and movies that I love. I'm excited for, for uh, Dune 2, and uh, there's another Avatar movie coming out, some other movies I can't wait to see. Um, the one thing that is, uh, that is that's not great, though, is that the contract that they signed runs out in 2026. That's not that long from now. So there's some theories on, on why the producers and uh, the AMPTP did that. I think uh, there's some, something fishy going on with, with how they're uh, conducting their, using their AI uh, to ultimately bolster their bargaining position when they come back in 2026, that's going to just, it's going to be tough all over again. So they have an uphill battle. What are your thoughts on AI, Carolyn? Um, absolutely. I agree with a lot of what you were discussing. As an actor and performer myself, it's definitely a worrisome idea that production agencies and companies can use my likeness in a film without compensating me for pay or my time or anything like that. I definitely think this is an uphill battle for those production companies as many of the upcoming releases, some of them are now being sent straight to streaming. I was certainly very upset to hear that the Wicked movie had been pushed back and Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse also was pushed back. Great movie. Those are definitely movies that I'm looking forward to. Now we have Andrew Baxley taking us to the streets to see what students say about streaming services, attending the movies, and the strikes. Thanks, Carolyn. Movies and TV shows are a huge part of today's culture. On this week's edition of Students Say, we're going around and asking students what their favorite movies and TV shows are. Let's get into it. What's your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, my favorite movie is Nacho Libre. When it comes to movie, I'm probably going to say The Social Network, but my favorite TV show is probably The Walking Dead. Friends. My favorite TV show right now would probably be Stranger Things. My favorite movie is My Girl. Favorite TV show, Avatar Last Airbender. Would you rather go to the theater or stay at home and watch Netflix? I'd rather stay at home and watch Netflix. Stay at home and watch Netflix. I really wish I... I, I like going to the theaters. I do. Because like it's such a different experience than sitting at home. Like, it's just big screen, loud, loud speakers in your ears, and then, like, that audience of people, like, the movie theaters I would go to, they would, like, yell and scream with me, and it would be really great. Yeah. It would be enjoyable. I'd rather stay at home and watch Netflix because when I go to the movie theaters, I normally fall asleep, and then I'm just paying for a nap, so. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good reason why. Definitely stay at home and watch Netflix. I have to, I'd have to say stay at home in the comfort of my bed. What, if anything, do you know about the actors and writers strike? Um, I know it's about AI, and I know it's a lot of like, um, they're struggling because they're not getting compensated. Um, not specifically, but I know that it's causing a lot of sadness among the writers, and that it's making it so that we can't really see a lot of films right now. Uh, I, th I think it had something to do with like, like people are not getting paid enough or something like that. I think so, yeah. I do know that uh, with, with Stranger Things, their most recent season got delayed because of the actual strike. They weren't able yeah. to get paid or something along those lines, so they weren't able to shoot on yeah. time. So it's been delayed. Uh, I know that uh, it's finally over, and Timothy Chalamet gets to promote his movie on SNL. 
they deserve to get paid. Like they sure. spent a very, very long time learning the lines and acting right, and it, at least more, at least twenty different takes. So I, th I feel like they should be paid accordingly. So yeah, I would go on strike too if I wasn't paid accordingly for as, as hard work as I would put in for something. Yeah. Thank you for joining me on this week's edition of Student Say. Back to you at the studio. Thank you, Andrew. We would love to hear our viewers' thoughts about streaming services, movie going, and the strikes. When we return from the break, we will hear from Kyle Clardy to talk about the business of movie theaters and streaming platforms. Stay tuned. Later, we will examine the movie and streaming industries. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course, man. Don't eat sweat. Really? Chatty, you are the best. These things all seem plagiarized to me. I think I'm gonna have to fail you. Why fail me? I only got one friend's help on these, Chad. Chad GPT? There's no AI in our school. Chat GPT and other AI sites are not a moral way to do your work. Have integrity and don't use Chat GPT for your assignments. Hi, I'm Madeline Barrett. I am a Southern Wesleyan graduate, uh, class of 2021. I majored in media communication in a concentration of public relations. I am currently at the reserves at Lake QE here at the sales office. I work with Coldwell Banker Kane. This original position was part-time and then my supervisor saw my resume and saw all of the things that I've done at Southern Wesleyan, including hosting a number of talk shows, creating an Instagram account for our communications department, and she thought, wow, you just have blown me away with all of these amazing things you've been a part of, and I want to offer you a full-time position here. Southern Wesleyan invested in me, and I got a return on my investment. Welcome back from the break. Today I'm here with Kyle Clardy, editor for WYFF News 4 and recent media communications graduate, to discuss the movie and streaming industry. How you doing today, Kyle? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Um, so my first question for you is, is, have you kept up with the business in the media industry? Yeah. Uh, so now with my recent position at WYFF, I've been involved with media. I uh, learned a lot, you know, just how it's a constantly changing and moving industry. Um, so I've, I've seen its changes, its ups and downs. Uh, the good and the bad, uh, but I'm just trying to get used to it. It's always changing, so there's always something new happening. So some of the recent things that we have seen are the pandemic and the strikes. Mm -hmm. Just how impactful have those been on the economy, particularly with streaming platforms and the movie business? Well, I think you saw with the, the pandemic in particular, uh, you saw some movie theaters close their doors even. Uh, it was so, so tough on them. Uh, I think you saw really the emergence of these streaming services now because it's so convenient for people to just watch at home now and for that time period you were not able to go to the movie theater and watch movies so you had to stay at home and watch them and streaming services are convenient. I mean you can download movies, you can download shows, watch them on the go. Uh, it's just so convenient now even though they're starting to raise the prices and catching up with it um, which is part of the issue for the economy. But I think you have seen the rise of movie theaters coming back since we've open things back up because sure. there's nothing quite like that movie theater experience you know you can't really go anywhere and get that where you walk in with your group of friends and you get you know get your popcorn yep. your so drinks like the it. night before the movie releases like you know everybody stays out for it um, so I think it's 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 on its way back uh, I don't know if it's fully recovered because obviously I don't think streaming services are going anywhere anytime soon uh, just because of convenience factor and then they were dropping movies on their platforms when they couldn't be in theaters so having those um, feature premiere films available on those services is going to make it hard to kind of push them out. Um, but I think the economy is recovering. I think that market's actually booming right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you touched on it a little bit before um, where streaming services are raising their prices. Right. Uh, some people have said that streaming services are becoming more like traditional TV packages. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that regarding content being um, divvied up in packages now because you have to buy so many streaming services. Right. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I think you see um, like some of these services like DirecTV, uh, you know, they're trying to adapt to the streaming aspect of it with DirecTV Stream. Um, but I think it's just overall, you look at like cable TV, I think it's just a dying industry really because it's hard to, you know, it's hard to keep up with these streaming services with their, when they're dropping shows, they're dropping movies now. I mean, it's really hard to compete with that. And, you know, you look at the price and you can pick and choose now what you want to get. You know, if you don't want all the stuff that comes with Paramount Plus, you don't have to get Paramount Plus. You can just take Netflix or whatever works for you. You can build that plan around whatever you want. The issue being then, 
they start to add up. You know, the more you get, and the For prices sure. as they're going up, like Netflix just raised their prices. So, you know, it's starting to add up. You look at that cable bill and then you realize if you have all your services, they're kind of getting it's, to where they're going to weigh out. not too dissimilar. For um, sure. But I, I think, you know, I think they're trying their best to adapt services like DirecTV and Dish and all those uh, cable services. But I think it's going to be hard to compete with what we have. And I think there's always going to be a new competitor coming up as well. Um, and then you look at a absolute monopoly juggernaut like YouTube TV. I mean, how do you beat that? They have YouTube videos. They have cable TV channels now. Yeah. And they're getting to where they have, you know, they just recently got NFL Sunday ticket. I mean, it's it's hard to stop that when they have that much money. I mean, what, what can you do? It's hard to compete. Um, that being said, mm -hmm. you touched on it a little bit, but what do you think the current future relationships are between streaming services and movie theaters? Um, and how can they adapt to coexist in the same landscape? Um, I think it's going to be a bit of a give and take for both. I think you're going to have where certain movies are released, um, on these streaming services and then other bigger like, huge box office projected hits are going to be delegated to the movie theater now i i would see a point where they start to clash and they decide hey no we want this movie really bad or no we want it um and you might have that issue that might have come up but i'm sure they'll figure out a deal and then worst case you know i think i think the services are going to take over eventually um just because of the convenience factor and how cheap it is compared to you know spending all that money at a theater you could theoretically save through a service. So I think, I think if push comes to shove, I think that the, str the streaming services will kind of put their foot down and say, hey, we're, you know, we're in charge here. So it seems like what you're saying, uh, movie theaters are sort of an underdog mm -hmm. in this whole thing. So yeah. what can they do to adapt to remain competitive in this era that's kind of dominated by streaming? Uh, I think the best they can do really is promotions. I mean, that's all you can really do is, because you can't say to them, hey, you know, we can give you this movie at home. You can watch this. I mean, you can't. That's kind of defeats the purpose. So all they can really do is have a promotional deal where, hey, if you come watch a movie, you know, your next ticket's half off or something like that. Buy one, get one free. I mean, yes, they're going to take a net loss in that, um, but you have to do what you can to compete. And so you have to sacrifice a little to gain a little. Um, so that's what they're going to have to do, I would imagine, at some point. Um, and I think you'll see that soon, that shift kind of change, whether maybe they lower their prices or they're giving out promotional deals. Um, but I would expect that kind of change in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today, Kyle. Yeah. I think your insight brought a lot more clarity into the business side of the entertainment world. Yeah, glad to be here. After the break, we'll continue our deep dive into the complexities of movie distribution, whether on streaming platforms or in the theaters. Then we hear from Lindsay Posey with more on the topic. Welcome back from the break. We talked earlier about the writers and actors strikes, and these coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic drastically changed the media business industry. Cinemas nationwide battled to keep the doors open, with many losing that battle. The strikes caused numerous delays in the output of media, causing streaming platforms to tank financially as well. With the economy in a downturn, audiences are clutching their wallets a little bit tighter, not spending as lavishly on entertainment. In order to gain access to all desired shows and movies, the public has to subscribe and make monthly payments for a plethora of different streaming services. Each subscription adds up, and many people are paying just as much for multiple streaming platforms as they would be paying for a traditional TV package. 
Some people still pay for both, spending hundreds a month on the media they consume. At first glance, streaming and the movies seem at odds, but in reality, they can coexist. Movies can continue to offer blockbusters with hits like Barbie and Oppenheimer, while streaming sticks with original content, documentaries, and niche genres not found in theaters. Movie theaters and streaming services can engage in joint marketing efforts to promote films. Cross promotions and collaborations could help build excitement and generate interest in both platforms. In lieu of the COVID-19 pandemic and writers and actors strikes, movie theaters have had a particularly difficult time keeping attendance up. Many theaters are supplying exclusive merchandise, implementing movie passes, improving amenities, and providing special events. Oftentimes, people want the instant gratification of viewing a movie on the big screen as soon as it comes out, instead of waiting for it to be added to a streaming service. On the other hand, many people opt out of the big screens because of ticket and concession prices, leaving them to watch TV in the comfort of their homes. Next, we have Lindsay Posey with an in-depth story covering streaming and movie theaters. It is no secret that the COVID-19 pandemic took a toll on the entertainment industry. Before the pandemic, United States movie theaters were recorded to have brought in $13 billion in 2019. This dropped dramatically to $2 billion the following year on account of restrictions enforced and efforts to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Since the pandemic, though, the movie theater industry is climbing its way back up, with a revenue of over $9 billion so far this year. While it's good to see theaters making a comeback, it cannot be denied that many people are now opting for the comfort of their couch with at-home entertainment via streaming services despite the end of the pandemic. After the pandemic, people got used to not going to movie theaters, and so that changed their purchasing habits. Also with the pandemic, incomes decreased. And then with the increased competition from streaming services, it's going to make them struggle a lot more to be able to stand out. The now common preference towards streaming puts a risk on movie theaters, especially with rising ticket and concession prices. I am actually kind of glad that streaming is taking over. Whenever a new movie comes out, they normally put it on streaming platforms too, and that saves a lot of money. While theaters work their way back to the relevance and popularity with big releases like the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer, it is uncertain whether or not they will return to pre-pandemic popularity with today's newfound convenience and affordability of watching movies at home. Thank you, Lindsay, for your coverage of these media industries. It sure is convenient to put on a movie at home, but there's nothing quite like going to the movies. Don't you think, Carolyn? I completely agree with you. Going to the movies is an experience like no other. I absolutely love going to a really highly anticipated film with friends, and especially now with movie theaters having those super comfy reclining seats. They're lovely. And a relaxing atmosphere in general. And now they offer a student discount, which is very helpful for me with my budget. And then also, now they also have $5 movie nights or do, yeah. certain deals on Tuesdays where you can go for a lot cheaper than you would go another night. And sometimes these are, you know, cult classics or movies from previous decades, but it's still a really fun All time movies. to experience those throwbacks. As for streaming services, I feel that they do have their benefits. I definitely think that they have a lot more options and they are on demand at any time. You can download the shows or movies that you wanna watch, whether you're traveling or just at home or you don't have access to the internet. So I think that's a really big benefit. And then I also think that um, they're just really helpful because you can stay at home and like stay in the comfort of your own home without making the trip to the movies. For sure. What do you think about them? Well, I personally love $5 movie night on Tuesdays. Go all the time. I recently saw Killers of the Flower Moon. Great movie. Um, the movies, it's, it's an experience. It's, it's not something, it's, it's an event. I don't think that's something that streaming can necessarily replicate as well. Um, they might be able to have timed releases uh, like movie theaters where you kind of count down to the release on streaming, but watching it at home is just not the same as watching it on the big screen. Absolutely. Um, my issue with streaming is the sheer amount of subscriptions that are required to watch all my favorite shows and movies. Um, I mean, I, I think right now I probably have five or six different streaming services that I don't even all pay for. Uh, I'm logged in on f um, family and friends accounts because I can't afford all of them, but I get to still get to watch the content. Although that's getting harder too because Netflix recently put in the household ban where you can't access the, your Netflix account if you live in a different spot than your own location. 
So streaming services are even switching that up, which is just making it difficult, um, especially as a college student. Um, thankfully, I'm not far away from home, but if you were far away from home, how are you supposed to keep, how are you supposed to keep your subscription? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, but at the very least, we get competition from these streaming platforms because of this. Um, I think we, we get to see better original content being made. Stranger Things, for one, is one of my favorite. Uh, I know Absolutely. everyone loves The Mandalorian on Disney favorites. Plus, Ted Lasso, Succession, The Boys on Amazon. There's a lot of these movies uh, and TV shows that are platform specific, and the the benefit of that competition is we're going to get better content. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. That's that's about it. I love going to the movies. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Compass. Tune in next time as we discuss politics and culture.